Hi everybody, I hope all of you are doing great. So in today's lecture, we're going to continue with our DP series with the next problem in line, which is longest palindromic substring, right? We have already solved count of palindromic substrings, so you can definitely go there and first watch this. This problem is having a prerequisite of gap strategy. If you have not watched this, you will find the link to that somewhere along here in the I button itself. So please watch the prerequisites before watching this video itself because this is a playlist and we are going in a proper order, right? So it is it will be benefit for you, but beneficial for you all if you follow this pattern itself, right? So let's get right into the problem itself. So this problem, uh, you are given a string S and you have to tell me the longest palindromic substring. In the last problem, if you remember, we solved the longest palindromic subsequence. In this problem, however, we have to solve for substring, longest palindromic substring, right? Both of them are different problems. There's a difference between substring and subsequence. I hope you already know that difference. I'll of course discuss in the video itself. And let us get to the board itself and then understand what the problem statement is actually saying with the example. For example, we are having this particular string and for this particular string, you have to tell me the longest palindromic substring. Now, substring is a contiguous segment of the string. Just like an array, what is a subarray? Contiguous segment of an array. Substring is contiguous segment of a string. If I choose this D, then if I choose this Q, then if I choose this P, D, Q, P. This definitely is a subsequence, but this is not a substring, right? Substring will always be contiguous. If I select this particular portion, contiguous chunk, or you can say contiguous segment of the string itself, that is called a substring, right? If I select this much area, Again, a substring. You have to tell me the longest palindromic substring in this whole string, right? Longest palindromic substrings. So let's uh, look at the problem statement itself and let, let's analyze this particular test case. So you can see if I talk about the substrings of length one, uh, this is the, you can say a palindrome. This a uh, length one, like uh, any string which is having a length one itself will be a palindrome that we already know. If you are talking about of length two, so can you see this P and P are coming together? So if there are two characters in the string, if both of them are equal, then only we can say that's a palindrome, right? Because palindrome is something if you read it from any string, which is which you read from the starting and you read from the ending, it is the same. For example, N A M A N. You read from this side, left to right, or you read from right to left, it will stay the same. Or in other words, more formally, I can say that palindrome is any string that if you reverse that string, that is equal to the original string itself, right? So I hope the palindrome part is clear. I hope substring part is clear. This is the answer for, for length two, this, this particular string, you have to return as the answer for length two. If, can I find some better length? Let's just see, like, can you see that here, this particular string PDP, PDP, if you write it in the normal form, it's PDP. If you reverse this, it will stay PDP only, right? PDP, right? So this is the substring, which is palindrome of length three. Is there any substring, which is of length four and is a palindrome? I don't think so. In this particular case, there is no substring of length four or more, right? So three, this PDP will be the answer because this is the longest palindromic substring in this problem, right? In this particular test case, I hope this is clear. Let us get right into the explanation part itself. Again, gap strategy is a prerequisite. You will find the link to that in the I button itself. Please watch that first before getting into the lecture itself. I'm going to directly like uh, use the tabulation approach, just like we did in the count number of. Uh, palindromic substrings, right? So let's get ready. Now I have drawn an N cross and DP just like we have done in the previous problems for gap strategy. N cross and DP refers this particular state. This is a Boolean DP. This particular cell, cell tells me that the substring starting from one th index ending at two th index. Basically this DP. Is this a palindrome or not? Of course here I'll have to write false, right? But can you see uh, the substring starting on zero th index? ending at the second index, this particular cell will be containing true because this particular string is substring. this kind of DP I'm forming, right? Just a Boolean DP, normal Boolean DP, right? So these three variables I've taken in order to keep the note of maximum length substring, which is a palindrome, right? This will be the starting point of that substring. This will be the ending point of that substring. And this will be the longest length, which I've encountered so far, right? So let us do an iteration on this DP itself using gap strategy. So, if you want to iterate on this, you can see first we have to fill the zeroth diagonal, right? The diagonal having a gap of zero. Can you see this? Like if there is a starting point is equal to ending point, right? If these two things are equal, can I say my substring is only having a single character? Yes, definitely I can. And if my substring is having only single character, can I simply say that it will be going to be a palindrome? Yes. Single character is a palindrome, right? So I'll write true here. Okay. And since I've written true here, 
have i got a better answer than what i already have i have found a length 0 till now actually i have not discovered anything but i have found a length of 0 but this true signifies that i have found a substring which is a palindrome of length 1 so i will update this length with 1 because i want the maximum right that's why i'm trying to keep this right and i'll not i'll up, update these variables as well starting 0 ending also 0 right signifies that we have found so far what have we discovered we have discovered a substring of length 1 right the maximum length palindrome is length of, of length 1 and starting point ending points are 0 and 0 right okay so let's move forward 1 to 1 same character like right? this means one starting point is equal to ending point this means that only one character is there I am going to write true here should I update the answer no because this is also signifying a substring of length 1 already I have the answer 1 I will not update I only update when I get a better length than this length so 2 to Single character, I am going to write true here, just like we have foresaw in the previous problem itself, right? You can definitely watch the whole walkthrough of gaps as I'm repeating again and again, right? Okay. So this particular thing, 0 to 1. 0 to 1. Okay. If we are standing on these characters 0 to 1, this means that starting point plus 1 is equal to ending point. And if this is the case, can I say that there are only two characters in my string. You can see starting character plus one is the ending point. This means that there are only two characters in the string. And two characters are only palindrome if both of them are equal. Can you see P and D are not equal? The character at zeroth index not equal to character at oneth index. I'm going to write false here. Character at oneth index is not equal to character at twoth index. I'm going to write false here. Character at twoth index not equal to third index. False. Q is not equal to P. False. But P is equal to P. This means that here I'm going to write true and this true signifies that the substring starting on fourth letter, fourth character, or fourth index ending at fifth index is forming a palindrome. I hope this is clear. Okay. All right. So this diagonal is filled. Now let us fill the rest of the diagonals and after filling this diagonal, can you see that in this particular diagonal, all of the substrings, whatever substring is a palindrome, that will be a palindrome of length 2. Have I found a better thing? Yes, definitely I have. So I'll update this. This becomes 2. This becomes true because I found this particular true here. This true signifies that P and P is a palindrome of length 2. I found a length 2 and starting ending points will be 4 to 5, right? So 4 to 5, these OSP, OEP, original starting point, original ending point, I'm updating to 4, 5, right? Whenever this variable gets updated, these two also get updated. Okay. So P to P are the ending for all the rest of the things. These were the two ba base cases for the rest of the things. If the end points are equal, if the end point characters are equal, you have to find out whether the middle people from D to D, these two are equal. I will be forming a palindrome only if the middle part will also be a palindrome. Can you see true is written here? This means the middle part is a palindrome. So I'm going to write a true here. And since I have written a true here, I found a palindrome of length 3. Can you see this? 0. This ending point minus starting point plus 1 is equal to 3. This signifies that the palindrome I'm having is of length 3. Starting point, ending point is forming a length 3. So I'll update this length. This becomes 3 and this 4 and 5 yeah, of course, obviously gets updated to 0 and ending point becomes 2. Okay, let's move forward. Can you see here D is not equal to Q. So if end points are not equal, I'm directly going to write false. P is equal to P. But is the middle part also equal? Can you see this PQP is also palindrome? Right. I have discovered this palindrome right here. P and P are equal. And is the middle part also palindrome? How do we find middle part? Starting point is this. Ending point is this. Where will I found the, find the middle part? Can you see that? If I want to find the middle part, I'll simply write here. Starting point plus 1. It will be the middle part will be starting from starting point plus 1 and it will be ending at ending point minus 1. Right. And this is exactly the same index. Right. Starting point is this particular. Uh, if I want to fill this column. Starting point is this. Starting point plus 1 is this row. Ending point is this. Ending point minus 1 is this column. So can you see that we are directly writing to this. I am going as deep as possible in this topic. I hope this is clear. This will also re write a true here. But we will not be updating the answer because we already have a length 5 here. 3 here. Correct. Okay. I hope this is clear. Let's move forward. Q to P. End points are not equal. I'll write false. P to P. End points are equal. Uh, P to Q. Sorry. End points are not equal. I'm going to write false here. D to P. End points are not equal. P to P. End points are equal. End points are equal. But can you see the middle part is not equal? If the middle part is not equal, I'm going to write false here. 
this is not a subsequence this is a substring and if this is a substring people have to be continuously make a palindrome if like i'll not say that you know in subsequence we might have done something like this ki okay uh, end points are equal so find whatever the best middle people can do i'll add two to that no we cannot do that my friend the middle part has to be a palindrome so that we can form a palindromic substring we have to write for here okay p to p the end points are equal but the middle part is not equal middle part is always here right sp plus 1 ep minus 1 right i am going to write false here end points are not equal i am going to write false here end points are equal but the middle part is not equal you can see end points are equal but middle part this is not a palindrome my friend and if this is not and if the middle part is not a palindrome i am not forming a palindromic substring i'll simply write here false and after completing this dp can you see that here we are having the overall answer right you just return the substring starting from starting point ending at ending point and that will be your answer itself i hope this whole iteration is clear let us get right into the code itself we have already done this kind of code before i don't think like those who are watching this series in a proper order will face any problems with this particular thing again i have told already told the prerequisites the gap strategy and the count palindromic substrings question is the prerequisite for this question you have to definitely watch that in order to get the in depth knowledge of what i'm doing here right so let's get right into it so we are back in the lead code itself and what i'm going to do i basically need three variables integer osp is equal to minus 1 initially integer oep ep is equal to minus 1 initially and integer length which i have found so far is zero i'll say zero okay no issues now i'll start my iterating on my dp so i'll need a integer 2d array integer of course i have to change the language as well just give me a second i just copy this paste code change the language and i'll write this say right? so integer dp is equal to new integer n comma n n cross n dp n n is what n is the int n is the s dot length length of the string itself so i've written n right so i form this dp of course i have to form a boolean dp i don't know why i have made this boolean okay that is a boolean dp right so for integer gap now this is the gap strategy i was talking about gap is equal to 0 gap less than n gap plus plus for integer starting point will always start from 0 we have already seen this in the previous questions ending point starts from the gap ending point less than n and sp plus plus and ep plus plus both will actually go plus plus together many of you i don't think many of you already know this kind of syntax we can write in for loop as well and for loops are so powerful we can also use like this only we don't have to always define i i less than we can define multiple variables we can check multiple boolean conditions we can increment multiple variables right okay so increment decrement whatever you want right so now if the gap is zero or i can say if the starting point is equal equal to the ending point this means that there is only one character and this kind of case always yields a true because one character is always a dp right it's always a palindrome right else if starting point plus one is equal equal to ending point this means that there are two characters and if there are two characters then dp of sp comma ep is only true when s dot char at char at sp is equal equal to s dot char at ep whatever this expression comes out to be if both of them are equal i am going to write true like i am going to store true here if both of them are not equal i am going to store false all right else in other cases what i am going to do i'll first check i'll first check basically i'll i can of course write it directly as well so dp of sp comma dp of sp comma ep the other other cases where where you can say where uh there are greater than two characters right so what i'm going to write here dp of sq comma ep will be of course end points have to be equal and dp of sp plus 1 dp of dp of sp plus 1 ep minus 1 has to be true this will give me a boolean thing because in dp i'm storing a boolean so if i try to access this particular index in my dp 2d array i'll get a boolean value if both of these conditions are true only only, only then i'm going to write a true here else i'm not going to write true if somehow like dp of sp of ep i have written true if i have given true here and and ep minus sp plus 1 this is the length of the current string right if ep minus sp plus 1 is like is the, of course if there's a true this means that the, there is a palindrome from starting point to ending point this is the length for the substring which is starting from starting point to ending point right 
this is greater than the length I found so far. If I am a palindrome and the length is greater than what I found so far, length is equal to EP minus SP plus 1, OSP is equal to SP, OEP is equal to EP, right? And this is how you will get the access to the starting point and the ending point of the palindrome itself. Now, what I'm going to do, they are asking in the problem statement to return the longest palindromic string itself. So here I'm going to simply write return uh, s dot substring, substring OSP starting from OSP ending at OAP plus one because ending point is excluding in this particular inbuilt function. Nah? So I have to write OAP plus one so that I include the person on the ending one itself, right? Let's run the code. It's accepting. Let's submit this. And this is of course the whole code for this problem longest palindromic substring. So I hope uh, the problem statement and the whole code part and everything was clear in this video. I hope you are enjoying the lectures itself. If you are doing so, please press the subscribe button. That is of course the best thing you can do to support the channel. And yeah, uh, many more interesting lectures are coming up and we are going towards you can say somewhat interesting questions. I'm not saying hard questions. I'm saying interesting questions in the DPC itself. I hope you are enjoying the DP series. Uh, until the next video drops. Bye.